Hey folks, welcome back to another top 10. I'm all by my lonesome. What am I going to do? Well, basically I'm going to give you my top 10 game mechanisms or mechanics, whatever you want to call them. Uh, these are uh, the top 10 things that I like to find in games. And usually if they are by themselves, that's not good enough. But if they are with, like if these 10 me mechanisms are like converged upon one game or if like maybe five of them are converged upon one game that's usually a game that I'm going to enjoy a lot so uh, without further ado let's go ahead and get to my top 10 game mechanisms so my number 10 is hand management there's just something about knowing exactly what I have to work with when I look at my hand and there's no uh, guesswork involved, I guess you could say. When my turn comes around, I know that the stuff that I have in my hand is what I have to work with. There isn't any variable there. There isn't a die roll. There isn't uh, any other kind of agent of chaos or randomness that uh, can uh, get in there and mess up my plan. I know that what's in my hand is what I have to work with. And that usually lasts throughout the course of the game. Now, as I said earlier, the caveat being, this isn't really good enough to stand on its own. Usually I want it to stand uh, with something else to throw in that level of chaos or that randomness. But uh, having a hand that I can work with and knowing that no matter what else happens in the game, that's what I have to work with, that is really cool to me. So my number 10 is hand management. My number nine is auctioning or bidding for something in the game. And again, I don't necessarily like all auction bidding games, especially those ones where you bid a certain amount and even if you don't win, you lose it hate that, loathe it completely. So the idea here of auctioning and bidding definitely has to be with something else, but it is one that I do enjoy a lot, where I'm putting up a certain amount of money that I want to pay for something and seeing if it makes it around the table. If it doesn't, weighing when it comes back to me, do I want to go up higher? Do I want to just pass and not have to worry about it? I like that tension in a game. So my number nine, auctioning or bidding. My number eight is an action point allowance system. And that's where you have a certain number of points or action points that you have at your disposal at the beginning of your turn. And then you know that you can do three things, if that's how many points that you can do. You have three things that you can do on your turn. And so you can get them all laid out. And when it comes back to your turn, boom, boom, boom. You get it done and it's over. It's the next person's turn. I think action point allowance systems really help uh, downtime stay at a minimum as you usually as long as everybody else is playing along down that road as far as thinking ahead of their turn what they're going to do so an action point allowance system knows it tells me I know that I have exactly that many things that I can do on my turn and so when I get them done it's over goes to the next person now I can talk start thinking about what I'm going to do on my next turn. So an action point allowance system, really cool in my opinion. My number eight. My number seven is simultaneous action selection. And this is a mechanism that really shines in my opinion when you pair it with uh, a group of uh, cards that are in your hand and everybody has the same actions to choose from. So you're choosing an action uh, from the same pool of actions as everybody else is choosing. And sometimes another little caveat there is that when uh, you choose the same action, maybe you get to do something extra or maybe you can't do as much when somebody chooses the same action as you. Those are little things that uh, kind of change up this whole idea of simultaneous action selection, but I do enjoy that a lot. There's just that point in the game where you flip over that card or you reveal whatever it is that you've chosen to do and, oh, did, did, did I match anybody else? Or hopefully I didn't, maybe hopefully I did. I really enjoy that. So my number seven, I'm sorry, yes. So my number seven there is simultaneous action selection. My number six is area control. Now area control has a lot of different uh, caveats with it. I don't enjoy all area control games, but it is one that I usually tend to gravitate towards. I just enjoy controlling an area or having to fight over different areas 
Now, some of area control games can be very cutthroat, and I usually tend to shy away from those kinds of games. But with area control, you're always going to have confrontation and contention, and usually that's where the tension in the game comes from, and that's what I usually enjoy about it. Area control, some of you might be thinking this should have been higher on your list. And whereas I can see where you might have that argument, the reason it isn't is because of some area control games I really don't enjoy because they're just too cutthroat. So my number six is area control. Now my number five is dice rolling. And I'll wait for a few moments for you guys to pick your chins up off the tables or floors, whatever uh, you might be doing. Okay, now, now the reason it's my number five and not higher on my list is because while I do enjoy dice rolling, it is not a mechanism that I must have or that I'm really really looking forward to or, or it's not one of those games that I'm I'm you know if if it has dice rolling great what kind of dice rolling is it is it this kind or is it that kind and so forth and so on um, so dice rolling is while it's a game that I a, a mechanism that I enjoy it is not one that I'm always on board for having there are games where it's just not necessary wouldn't even be helpful so dice rolling is a, game, a mechanism that I really enjoy, but it's, it can be uh, won out by other mechanisms when they're thrown together. So that's my number five, dice rolling. My number four is worker placement. There's just something about having your team or your cadre of, of workers that you're going to send out on your at the beginning of your turn and have them do certain actions in the game and then they're going to bring back those resources or accomplish those tasks that you sent them out to do or, or whatever it might be. But I just really enjoy the idea of taking your workers sending them out to do a job, having them complete it, and come back. Worker placement is one of my favorite strategies or uh, mechanisms in a game. And if a game has that in it, we're now getting into that uh, echelon of if this me mechanism is in the game, I really want to give it a try at least. Doesn't mean I'll, I'll necessarily be on board for it, but worker placement is one of those mechanisms that if it if a game has it, I'm interested in it uh, from the very beginning of talking about it. So worker placement, my number four. My number three is card drafting. Now card drafting is that mechanism where you have a hand of cards in your hand, you take one and you pass the rest to the person on your player, on your left or your right. And then uh, the other person passes you a uh, hand of cards and you choose another one. And you keep doing that around the table until you come to a predetermined number of cards that each player is gonna start with in their hands. Um, this gives you the opportunity to pick what strategy you're going to have, to choose the different tactics that you're going to employ on your turns. It really gives you more freedom with cards than just a luck of the draw, top, you know, top drawing off of a deck or something to that effect. I really enjoy card drafting, and again, this is one of those mechanisms that I'm really interested in a game if it includes it. My number three, card drafting. My number two is variable player powers. Now, I really enjoy games that are balanced, but each person is different from the other one. And that's really what is the core of variable player powers. You all basically are able to do the same things, generally speaking, but somebody is much better at one thing than another person. And that person is really good at something else. And I'm better at something completely different than those two people. I really enjoy variable player powers. It just gives a sense of variety, a sense of distinction uh, to my group of people or my character or whatever it might be if variable player powers are within it. It just gives a different feel to the game. I really enjoy it. So my number two is variable player powers. Now my number one is a mechanism that if it is present in a game, I want to try that game. I really desire to try that game, and that is cooperative play. Cooperative games are probably my favorite style of game, uh, and then there's all different kinds of subgenres that this mechanism can really fit well into. But having a sense of attacking the game together as a team is really fun to me. Games that have competition 
is all they're all well and good. I, I enjoy those kinds of games too, but there just seems to be something about everybody playing together against a certain set of mechanisms or or whatever might comprise the game. And I really enjoy that the most. It is by far my favorite genre of games right now, but I do have other games that I enjoy better than cooperative games, but as a whole, generally speaking, cooperative games are my favorite genre. So that is my top 10 mechanisms within games. Uh, let me know in the comments below whether you agree or disagree with me. Maybe you disagree with the argumentation that I used, whatever. Uh, just let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the flip side. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.